I give thanks to the good Lord for each one of you, for my church family, for our guests, for those that are here, for those that are visiting somewhere else. And I want to extend a special welcome home to those that have been away and just came back home. Welcome back. Let's give them a warm welcome. I would like to extend a thank you to my ministry team, my colleagues, Pastor Tania, Pastor Lynette. I would like to thank the elders of the church, the ministry leads of the church, every single member of this church family for all your support or your care throughout the year. I would like to thank all of those that uh, watch online. They may not feel the warmth of this congregation here on the grounds, but they are still a part of this church family. And all of those that are visiting today or any, thank you, other day, thank you so much for being part of this wonderful congregation. You may be right now at a point of your life high on top of a mountain where you feel grateful and thankful to the good Lord for everything He's done for you. But they say as high as the mountain, as deep can be the valley. There might be somebody here this Sabbath morning that looks around, looks within and without himself or herself and says, Lord, I don't see anything I can really be thankful for. Yes, we always say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But is that always what we feel deep down in our hearts? I heard a farmer's story from a farmer, a story from a farmer about a farmer. One summer, this farmer was very concerned about the drought. The crops in the fields were in danger because of lack of water. They would be decimated if something would not happen. And the farmer went to the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, you know our life depends on the crops. You know how much we need rain. Without your blessing, we are lost. Literally, we are lost. And uh, the day passed. And nothing happened. Next day he prayed again. The day passed and nothing happened. But then some days later, he noticed a gray spot in the sky. And uh, the spot started growing. He was happy. He was all thrilled about this little spot growing into a somewhat menacing thunderstorm cloud. And he said, Lord, thank you so much for your blessing. The rain is on the way. Thank you, Lord. And indeed, the rain came, it poured down, but then it became a hailstorm, and the storm hit everything, and uh, the crops really were decimated. And the poor farmer was sitting on the porch of uh, his manor with his face in his palms. And he would go, Lord, you've given us blessing, but there is nothing in it to be thankful for. Sometimes life can look like this. Sometimes life can look like after a hail storm. Is there anything to thank for in a situation like that? 
As we were preaching throughout the book of Ephesus, Ephesians, we several times skipped a certain verse, and I always told you, guys, this is my Thanksgiving sermon in there. I'm saving it for Thanksgiving. Well, it's Thanksgiving now, and uh, it was comfortable saying that I'm saving it for Thanksgiving, and it was technically true. The reality is, however, that whenever I read that verse, I hit a brick wall. I felt like, yeah, I've not seen this in the Bible before. When did it get in here? And I would like to read for some context, starting with verse 15 in chapter 5, and see what God is teaching here about the magnitude of the attitude of gratitude. The magnitude of the attitude of gratitude. See then, says Paul, that you walk circumspectly or carefully, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 17, therefore do not be unwise, but understand or put together what the will or the desire of the Lord is. Keep that word will in mind, the will of the Lord. Verse 18, and do not be drunk with wine, wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Verse 19. And here, one after the other, you have three verbs that end in I-N-G. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, we spoke about that. But then I skipped verse 20 and uh, spoke about verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. What is that verse about that I skipped? I would like to read from my Bible, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. Giving thanks to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But where you can see those dots... There are some missing words. Don't move the picture yet, please. Please, somebody tell me what the missing words are. Giving thanks. What? Always. That's a big word. Always? But listen, ever since I was a child, I was taught that if somebody gives something to me, and usually you would get something nice, you know, and what do you say? Thank you, if you can catch it. Right? But this says always, so what if, if I throw this to you? That's part of the always as well. And to make it worse, there are some other words there as well. What are those words? Always, yes, always what? For everything. And if you had doubts that you should not thank me because of this piece of uh, mortar, almost half a brick, then, then yes, all things is all things. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's popular today out there to emphasize the attitude of gratitude. We do teach our children to be grateful. I know your brother got one. You have to get one too. <laughs> All right, go for it. And you say what? What do you say? 
thank you. Of course. So beautiful. And if you keep an eye open and uh, your ears focused, you will see that this is a mantra of coaching, of personal training, of uh, motivational speakers out there. Everybody will encourage you to be thankful. For what? For all the blessings, small or big, that come into your life. Problem is, life does not only throw blessings or things that you may perceive as blessings at you. Life sometimes throws bricks. And uh, speaking about motivational speakers, I don't know if you're uh, aware of the fact that Ellen G. White, in uh, an age where motivational speakers were not that present, she was talking about thanksgiving, about giving thanks. She says, nothing tends more to promote health of body and soul. Yeah, did you know that uh, science has kind of confirmed today that if you are thankful, you can live longer? Hey, it's worth being thankful. And if you are thankful, you have a good chance of avoiding a personal meeting with uh, that guy with a German name called Alzheimer. <laughs> Only for these health benefits, it would be worth being thankful, wouldn't it? But watch this. In 1905, when Ellen White wrote Ministry of Healing, she knew about the health benefits of uh, thanksgiving, of gratitude. Nothing thanks more to promote health of body and soul than does a spirit of gratitude and praise. It is a positive duty to resist what? Melancholy. What is that? Ah, oh, that's it. In those days, they didn't use the word depression. Now, everywhere, everywhere about depression, about depression, about depression. She uses that fancy word that seems to be poetry. No, it's the same concept. Resist melancholy or melancholy, discontented thoughts and feelings as much a duty as it is to pray. Wow, that is something. And then she goes on, like a motivational speak speaker, telling us how important it is to educate ourselves. Not only to educate our children to be grateful, to be thankful, to say thank you, thank you. No. It is about educating ourselves. Let them us educate our hearts and lips to speak the praise of God for His matchless love. Let us educate our souls to be hopeful and to abide in the light shining from the cross of Calvary. That's the light of salvation. And she moves one step further. And she says, have we not reason to be thankful every moment? Oh, every moment? Thankful even when there are apparent difficulties? in our pathway. And then she quotes a Bible verse. Watch that Bible verse. In everything, please keep that in mind. In everything, the preposition is what? In. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The will of God is to give thanks in everything. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. This command is an assurance that even the things which appear to be against us will work for our good. But this verse that she uses there, 
appears in another verse, very similar, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What does it mean in everything? Well, the most common interpretation of in everything is this. No matter what situation you are in, good or bad, you should always find something to be thankful for. Now, that thing you are thankful for could be something that is in that situation or something else, something from the past, present, or future. Just find something. Even if you have to make abstraction of the situation you're in, you should find something and focus on that something and give thanks for that something. Like in the classical story of the guy that was robbed. You probably know this story. The guy, is, the guy was robbed and he was thankful. He said, thank you, Lord, because I've never been robbed in the past. <laughs> and then he went on and said, thank you, Lord, because they robbed my purse, but they did not rob my life. How about that? Thank you, Lord, because although they took... All I had, I didn't have too much to take. Thank you. And thank you because I was robbed and not I who robbed. Thank you, Lord. So you can think like this. You're in a situation, but you are projecting and you are thankful for something else from a totally different situation. But... My Bible verse to, for today is not like this. It doesn't say the exact same thing. I wish it had said the same thing. I wouldn't have hit the brick wall. Let me show what my Bible verse for today says. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Give thanks always... Not in everything, but what? Oh, that's a different situation. For all things. And I put there the Greek words, pantote, which is always, and panton, which is all, for all. Which means all things and all people. In other words, if I throw this brick at you and hit you, you should be thankful for the brick and for the one that threw the brick. Doesn't sound good. Let me give you an example. Years ago, and I, I was told this story by somebody that was in the audience, a pastor was preaching not too far from here, a female pastor, very animated pastor, and she spoke as an illustration about her failed marriage and uh, how she got a divorce, and then sometime after she got divorced, her husband passed away, and she jumped and said, thank you, Lord, twice saved. <laughs> now, you can imagine what the reaction of the congregation was to that. Pastor, are you okay? I mean, there are some things that happen in life. Some things happen to your life personally that you would not even dare thank God publicly because you know what adverse reaction your thank will bring out. Right? But this is what the Bible says, this specific verse. It doesn't ask you to be thankful from a distance, like you had a divorce, painful experience that happened to you in 2011. And now it's 2022. And of course, because of the grace of God that has brought you up to this point, you look back and you say, wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's not what the text says. 
The text says, you are in the middle of it right now. And maybe you are. Maybe you are. The text says you are in the middle of it. And even right now, you should be thankful for it happening to you and for the one that does it to you. Now, if that is easy, I mean, hey, people have gone through these kind of things. But being thankful in most of those situations is extremely difficult. You would crawl on the floor. You would coil up in a fetal position. You want to die in some of those situations. And yet, Paul says, giving thanks always for all things. And if you have doubts that all people is part of the text, let me show you a text that is about all people. 1 Timothy 2, 1. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. All men? Well, this was an extreme picture, with that one with the divorce. But there are smaller things in life. 16 years ago, which was 2006, I had the chance to come for the first time to the United States to visit. Then I went back, and in a week after that, I got into a horrible car wreck. My car, my first car, the car that God gave to me miraculously as a blessing was totaled. But not only that, when I looked at my left hand, I noticed the tip of one of my fingers was missing, and it was heavily bleeding. I looked closer, and I couldn't believe the tip of my finger was actually hanging on a small little piece, a shred of skin, and bleeding heavily, I could not feel anything. And I can't show which finger it was, because it happens to be the middle finger, and you would think something else. <laughs> but if I had not told you, would you have? No. Question, do you think I was uh, grateful? Brother, I thought about playing the piano, and I was horrified. I thought about playing the guitar even worse, because you have to squeeze that string. I thought about preaching. Hey, you're a pastor, and pastors do a lot of preaching with their fingers, if you haven't noticed. That was horrible. In always, in everything, give thanks. It almost sounds as if God is encouraging you to be hypocritical. Like when you receive a gift that you don't like, you can't stand it, and you put on that smile and say, thank you. Oh, so nice. Oh. Don't do that, really. Nobody forces you to do that. That is hypocritical, but God is not pushing us into hypocrisy here. There is something amazing in this Bible verse. Because in this Bible verse, you are not sent to thank the abuser for the abuse that you suffered from his or her hands or mouth. This Bible verse does not send you to, to say, thank you, thank you for uh, bad-mouthing me. So good. It doesn't say, thank you so much for, for what? And you have your story when somebody disappointed you, when somebody cheated on you, when somebody took what was yours, when somebody trampled on your character, when somebody tried to bring you down at all costs. The Bible doesn't say that. 
Go back to my verse. Let's see what the verse says. Giving thanks always for all things and people. To whom? Oh, to God. Joseph was greatly abused by his brothers. He was thrown in a pit. He was sold into slavery. And later on, Joseph meets his brothers, and three times he mentions, Hey guys, God brought me here. But where was he when he said, God brought me here? Well, he was in the palace of Pharaoh. Of course God brought him there. But was that the intention of his brothers for him to get to the Pharaoh's palace? No. And there comes a time toward the end of his journey, after Jacob passes away, his brothers are scared, and they come to him to speak to him again, and then Joseph speaks to them openly. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Look what he says. But as for you, you meant evil against me. You will never read in the story that Joseph went to his brothers and said, thank you guys. It was so good. If you had not done that to me, I wouldn't have been here. No, that's not the biblical teaching. The biblical teaching is that you have to go and give thanks for everything, for everybody, always to whom? Not even that. Tell me the full answer. To God, the Father. That matters. That matters, especially when somebody hit you with a brick. Joseph says, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. But God, yes, you've done this or that to me, but God, Yes, things happened and I suffered, but God. Yes, I was hit heavily, but God. And this idea of God, especially when it's completed with the idea of God that is the Father, changes the whole picture. Because in that case, you are not just going to thank God somebody that abused you. You go to God that is your father, and that father of yours knows exactly what you are going through. And watch this. In a way, whenever somebody throws a brick at you, and the brick hits you, it came from whom? Biblically. From from the Father. It's almost like saying that it is God the Father that hit you with a brick. Is that heresy? No. Go to the story of Job. Job, a righteous person, a wonderful guy, somebody that serves people around him, Somebody well respected in society, that has good friends, smart friends, philosophers. And he loses everything. Nearly all his family is gone. And what does Job say? Job chapter 1. Verse 21, the Lord, who? The Lord gave. Yes, this, this is true. And the Lord has taken away. So who threw the brick? 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you may say, okay, okay, this is hard enough. No, 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 this is not the end of it. This is just an attitude of gratitude. Watch and see the magnitude of the attitude and of gratitude. What is that? Job 13, verse 15. After he lost everything, after all his family is gone, his wife is still alive, but she's gone too in a way. And now his health is compromised, big time. Job says, verse 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 15, Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Now tell me what kind of thankfulness is that? Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. He never went to the devil and fight with him. Never quarreled and said, hey, you did this to me. He went to the Lord, yes, had those fierce conversations with the Lord, but the default attitude by which he went to the Lord was the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know how you feel about this, but when I hit this Bible verse as a wall several times in my process of trying to understand the book of Ephesians, I was like, nothing what I knew before is, is like this. I was taught to be thankful for the blessings. Never was taught to thank God because somebody threw a brick into my head. And now I realize in some instances of my life how different my experience would have been. My father passed away four years ago, almost four years of lung cancer. And I had to go back to Romania for the burial, for the funeral service. You think I was thankful? I would have been thankful, quite honestly. I would have been thankful because when somebody passes away after suffering greatly and he, he had to take morphine for his pain, I would have been thankful had he passed away the way I think he should have passed away. I have three brothers, one is older, two are younger, and my father in his final years had a very strained relationship with all three of them. And uh, sometimes I even had the feeling that now he will try to put me bumping heads with them. But I was praying and I was hoping, like really hoping that Knowing that he was sick, he will somehow come back to his senses and he will have that moment of uh, reconciliation, of closure with my brothers. And when he will pass, we will all be thankful. Never happened. And you can imagine the four of us standing by the grave side in the order of our birth, thinking probably about the same thing. He could have died differently. It can make it worse if I tell you he was a Seventh day Adventist. Or was he? I didn't have this understanding at that time. I wish I had it. Because now I realize, yes, it was painful. 
But had I entered that experience with this magnitude of the attitude of gratitude, I would have stood by that grave differently. Now, looking back, I understand that God, yes, he didn't want him to die that way, but the fact that he died that way, God took it over, because that's what happens. When somebody throws a brick, God catches it first, slows it down, and may use it to shape your life. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the previous part. No test has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But, and this is what is important here, God is faithful. And now the continuation. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear, to endure it. But my Bible verse, put it up there for the last time, says something else too giving thanks always for all things and people to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Was Jesus Christ thankful? Did he have the attitude of gratitude? When? Give me a moment. Do you remember at Lazarus' grave when he said, what did he say? Lord, Father, thank you because you always hear me. Remember that? It seems to me, however, that in the Garden of Gethsemane, his prayer was not answered. He said, Father, if at all possible, please let this cup pass me. And that is practically the picture of an execution when the prisoners are lined up one after the other and the executionist is there standing on the side and somebody carries a cup watching the executionist and when the executionist will nod, the cup will be passed to that prisoner and he will have to drink the poison. And Jesus takes that picture and says, Father, if possible, let it pass from me. Did it pass? No, it didn't. Do you know Jesus entered that garden with an attitude of gratitude? And if yes, then when was that moment that you can see was a moment of gratitude? Because he knew what was following. He knew he was going to be caught. He knew he was going to be put in jail. He knew he was going to be put on trial. He knew he was going to be falsely accused. He knew he was going to, even, to be even crucified. And he had a moment of thanks to the Father before. Do you know when it was? Not long ago, I preached from the exact same passage, and at that time, I didn't understand fully what was happening. When Jesus was offering the emblems of the communion service, first the bread, and then what? The wine. Have you noticed that when he took the bread, he blessed the bread, and then when he took the cup, he did what? No, the word is not blessed. He gave thanks. Now, if he gave thanks, and then he passed it on to his disciples, and that was a cup, and said, drink 
from it, all of you, because this is my blood. What was he thanking for? The Father. What was he giving thanks for? He was giving thanks for his own death. He entered with an attitude of gratitude into that garden. And in the end, he is arrested, betrayed. Has he ever turned to Judas and say, Hey, buddy, thank you so much for that kiss. Oh, mm, so nice of you. No, he didn't do that. He said, are you betraying the Son of God, of man, with a kiss? Then at one point, one of the officers standing next to him slapped him into his face. You know what he said? He turned to him and said, why are you hitting me? Why are you beating me? And yet, the attitude of gratitude was there. Without that attitude of gratitude, he could have never said what he said on the cross. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And to me, his final words are the epitome of uh, gratitude. Not only the attitude of gratitude, but the magnitude of the attitude of gratitude. When he, his final words, turned to his father, he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And that's another way of saying, Father, Thank you for everything and for everybody. Amen.